In the last video, we saw that we needed negative numbers in order to answer a certain kind of question. We needed a negative number in order to answer questions like, what is 2 minus 5? I want to start by thinking about this problem on the number line. So here's a number line, and now I'm going to draw the lengths 2 and 5. Well, remember how we understood 5 minus 2 on the number line. 5 minus 2 refers to the line segment that starts at the end of 2 and ends at the end of 5. So we would draw starting at 2 and ending at 5. And then by picking this up and moving it, we can see that 5 minus 2 is in fact 3. Okay, well if that's 5 minus 2, 2 minus 5 has to just go the other way, right? 2 minus 5 must be the line segment that starts at the end of 5 and ends at the end of 2. Right, I'm just reversing the order. So 2 minus 5 starts at the end of 5 and ends at the end of 2. And we said that this number has to be negative 3. Okay, so what must negative 3 look like on the number line? Negative 3 does an entirely new thing. All of the numbers we've seen so far point to the right, but negative 3 points to the left. What does that mean to me? That means I have to move my number line so that 0 isn't at the left edge anymore. So that 0 is now in the middle. So picking it up and moving it over, what happens to negative 3 if I move it so that it starts at 0? Well, negative 3 goes here, which means that the label negative 3 has to be here. I see what's going on with these negative number labels. Here's negative 1, negative 2, negative 3 we already said, negative 4, and negative 5. On the number line, then, the negative numbers just count up to the left of 0. Let's introduce a little vocabulary here. The numbers to the left of 0, we've already said, are called negative numbers. But, you know, now that we have a name for the numbers to the left of 0, we need a special name for the numbers that are to the right of zero, that is, for the numbers that we already had. The numbers that are to the right of zero now, they're called positive numbers. What about zero itself? Zero, it turns out, doesn't fall into either category. Zero is neither positive nor negative. We also have words for these families of numbers. The whole numbers, along with their negative versions, are called the integers. Remember that term, integer. There's another term as well. All the numbers that can be expressed as fractions, along with their negative versions, are called the rational numbers. Now why did I say all the numbers that can be expressed as fractions? 
instead of all the fractions? Well, remember that one number can be described by several fractions. That's what we saw with equivalent fractions. It's the number itself that's a rational number, not the fraction. Those are all of the numbers that we know of right now. Right? The only ways we know to get numbers are to take either a whole number or a fraction and then say that it's either positive or negative. It turns out that there are numbers that we cannot possibly express as a fraction, and we will meet those later in the course. What would a negative fraction look like, by the way? Well, just like we could divide up our number line and draw, for example, positive 5 thirds, we could also divide up the units to the left of 0 and draw, for example, negative 5 thirds. Right? Notice those are both the same length. I counted off the same number of thirds. It's just that in order to draw negative 5 thirds, I counted off thirds to the left of 0. Uh, 